Yo, what is good? It's Vozobis here and welcome to the ultimate guide for making beats in Reaper. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Dominic, but they call me Vozo. And for the past few years, I've been just making beats in Reaper. I think Reaper is a great tool for making music in general, not like only for making beats. In this video, I'm going to sum up all the videos about Reaper I've made so far uh, for the past nine months uh, since this channel started growing. It wouldn't be really possible without you. Yes, you. So thank you for uh, being my subscriber. And if you are still not subscribed and you want to make beats in Reaper, please consider doing so. You can also follow me on Instagram where I'm posting lots of cool and useful stuff. And you can always hit me up if you need something. And most importantly, I've opened a Facebook group uh, for all the Reaper producers. Uh, the link is in the description down below. Um, so you can join it and ask for help, uh, share your inspiration, share your knowledge, share your tips, anything you like. Okay, let's get to the topic. Firstly, I'm going to start with essential tools for making beats in Reaper, such as samplers and all the other plugins for melodies, 808s and stuff. Then we will move to mixing tools like EQs, compressors and some other plugins you can find in Reaper and I will recommend a few free plugins you can download and use in Reaper. Next, I'll teach you how to write automation as well as how to program your knobs on your MIDI controller to change some parameters inside any plugin you like. Next, I'll tell you about uh, sends for reverbs, delays, and maybe some other stuff if you like. Next, a really important thing, I will show you the MIDI editor, not only with its basic features, but also with some user-written scripts, which allow you to insert chords, scales, arps, and some other cool things. And throughout all of this tutorial, I will be showing you the beat-making workflow, including writing patterns inside the computer, as well as playing the patterns using a MIDI controller. There's going to be lots of talking, so here we go. So here is an empty session opened in Reaper. As some of you may know, this is not the usual look of Reaper since I'm using the iLogic theme made by uh, blank files. By default, Reaper should look a little bit more like that. Uh, the transport bar will be at the bottom, but I just prefer to use a different look. I'm using the iLogic version 2.65. Uh, I know there is a more recent version, but that's just my favorite. The theme link, as well as links for all the plugins I will be mentioning in this video are in the description down below. Reaper has a really typical look of a linear DW. Here we have the track section, here we have our session, and here we have all the controls we will be using. On my second screen, I have the mixer. It's empty right now, but as I will be creating some more tracks, we'll see them right here. As you can see, here are all the tracks, here are the controls, panning, volume, everything you will need. Okay, so firstly, let's create a new track. Let's name it Pseudo Master. I like to have the Pseudo Master uh, track just before the real master track, uh, so I can control the volume of my beat before it hits any of the plugins inside the mastering chain. Because this fader right here, the real master fader, uh, is controlling the volume after those plugins. And this fader right here will be controlling the volume before those plugins. So just keep in mind to make a pseudo master track. It will save you lots of trouble uh, when you will be mixing your beat. Let's start this tutorial from the drum section. So we need to create a new track and let's name it Drum Bus. This will be the group track for all the drums in our project. So we have the control of the whole drum pattern under one volume fader. And now I'm going to place the drum bus under the pseudo master. So the drum bus is coming into the pseudo master, the pseudo master is coming into our real master track. And here is the first unusual thing about Reaper. Reaper has no types of tracks. In Reaper there is just a track. All the tracks in Reaper can contain both audio and MIDI. And there is no type of a track like MIDI track, audio track, group track, effects track or any other. The only exception is uh, the automation lane. Uh, which looks like that and it's just connected to a track. In this case, it's a volume automation so we can control volume, but we'll talk about automation later in this video. Let's create our first track for hi-hats. So insert new track and let's name it hi-hat. And now I'm drag and dropping the hi-hat under the drum bus. I'm making this track wider so I can see all the controls and here are the insert section. Let's press it. And now what we are seeing is the effects browser. Here are all the plugins uh, I'm having right now and there is way too many plugins right now. So that's why you have this filter right here. You can just search for a certain plugin. In this case, we are looking for Resamplomatic 5000. Here it goes, just hit enter 
and that's how the sampler looks like. This is the most basic kind of sampler you can find in Reaper. It can be used for any one-shot kind of sample, including drum samples as well as some instruments, for example plucks or any other horn hits and stuff. It can process one sample per instance, so it means it's not the best choice for the whole drum kit. But I'll also show you a free, really decent drum sampler after Resamplomatic. Okay, so first of all, let's go to View and let's press Media Explorer. You can also turn it on by uh, combining Ctrl, Alt, plus X. And here goes the Media Explorer. Uh, this is just a typical Media Explorer you can find in lots of softwares uh, where you can just browse uh, through your samples in this case. By default, it may be floating like that. So it's a free floating window as well as it can be uh, docked in at the very bottom of Reaper. So what you want to do, just go right here uh, to this white bar, press right button on your mouse and press Dock Media Explorer in Docker. And it should go to the Docker. And you can place it at the bottom or on the right if you want to just anywhere you like. Okay, let's open hi-hats, closed. I'm going to wear my headphones. And just simply, I'm going to drag and drop the sample right here. And bang, here it goes. Here you can take a listen. You can also play it on your MIDI controller. And to make this happen, uh, just arm your track for recording with this R icon, as well as enable the record monitoring. So this I should be turned on. Now this input is set to the audio input, so you are hearing this cable of for my guitar laying somewhere around here. Yeah, here it goes. Oh yeah. Just press the right button of your mouse on this meter right here and select input MIDI and all MIDI inputs or a certain MIDI input from uh, all your MIDI controllers. Here I'm just going to choose my MPD and all MIDI channels. And now I can play my hi-hats with my MIDI controller. Here's the ruler that tells you about the bar you are currently on, as well as it tells you about the time uh, of the song. And now I'm just going to select a certain part of the ruler, uh, eight bars to be exact, so we can uh, have a loop right here. And to record in a loop, you need to make sure you have the loop function turned on, on this button right here. And now let's record a hi-hat pattern. If you need a count in with the metronome, just go to the metronome, press the right button on your mouse and count in before recording. One, two, three, four. Ah, I messed up. But you don't need to stop. Let's just wait for the next loop. Here it goes. And now let's have a look what happened here, because you can see we have like three tracks on one track and it looks kind of weird. No need to worry, this is how Reaper shows you all the takes you've recorded in this loop, because remember, we are in a loop. So now you can have a listen to any of the loops you've recorded uh, and you can just choose your best performance. So as you already know, I've messed up the first take and the second take is pretty decent. The first take is just the ending of the second take. Uh, because it's in a loop. So now, as we have the second loop selected, let's just hit the right button on our mouse and let's click glue items. And here we go, here's the one and only take. Now let's just double click it and here is the MIDI editor. Uh, here we have all of our hi-hats. This particular hi-hat pattern is pretty complex, so it won't be as easy uh, to take care of as it would be uh, when it was a snare, for example. So here in the MIDI editor, I'm changing the grid to 16th notes. In the iLogic theme, you can also set it right here. Let's bring this closer to us with the scroll on our mouse. And let's start quantizing by just selecting those notes and hitting Q. When I'm hitting Q, I'm seeing this quantize events menu. By default, it's 100% quantization, so it will be aligned perfectly to the grid. And let's just hit OK. So firstly, I'm just aligning all those 16th notes and then I'll be aligning the 32nd notes, the triplets and all the other notes. Now I'm changing the mode to triplets and I'm quantizing all the triplets in this project. Okay, so as we are finished, let's just close this window and let's go back to the beat. Let's unarm this track from recording. And now we have our hi-hat pattern right here. Oh, 
Okay, now let's make some other drum elements. So for this purpose, let's go to insert and let's press virtual instrument on a new track. Now we are seeing the plugin browser again and let's look for Sitala. Do you want to add the following tracks for this effect? If not, only the stereo one slash two outputs will be audible without further routing. So we hit yes. And what happened right now, we have this plugin loaded in right here on this track and we have all the other tracks with the audio coming out of the plugin so we can mix the kick, the snare, the hi-hats, anything in this plugin separately. Okay, but let's go back to the plugin. Here is how it looks like. This is not a Reaper's stock plugin, so you need to download it. Uh, the download link is in the description down below. And what Citala is, is just basically a multi-sample uh, drum sampler. You can just load uh, 16 samples right here, so it's great for the MPC styled controllers. By default, it comes with the traditional 808 uh, sound kit, but you can just load any sample you like into the plugin. By default, it's not properly mapped because the sounds are just random on my controller. So let's go here, let's click those three dots and hit Edit MIDI Map MIDI Learn. Right now, all of, all of those samples turned blue, and here I'm clicking on the kick, and here I want my kick. Here I'm clicking on the snare, and here I want my snare. And so on with the hi-hats, uh, with all the symbols in the plugin. You just need to configure it. It's really, really simple. Uh, you just have to click all of those sounds and tell the plugin where you want to put them on your controller. You can just use uh, a keyboard, uh, you can use your keys, everything you want. Okay, I think I'm finished. It, it was looking pretty funny, I suppose. Now let's exit the MIDI learn mode. And it's working properly. Let's have a jam. Perfect. Okay, so now let's browse through the features of this plugin. Uh, let's use the snare as an example. Here we have the shape knob, which lets us shape the sample. So for example, we want to have less attack. Or we want to make it shorter. So it's a really simple uh, general ADSR. We can tune the sample. with this really cool representation uh, on the spectrogram. Of course, we can change the volume, but I don't want to change the volume. We can compress our sample. Pretty basic drum compressor. We can change the tone, so it will just uh, change the EQ on our snare. And of course, we can change the panning. but the snare stays in the center. Okay, I want to change the snare, so let's open snares in this sample pack. And if you find a snare you like, just drag and drop it directly to the plugin. And here we go. Also, I want to change the kick and here it goes. Okay, let's close the plugin now. Let's make a new track. Let's just name it Citala. I know there's a track called Citala, but this one right here, uh, has the plugin inserted and let's just put all of those tracks under Citala and let's put Citala under the drum bus because it's a part of our drum bus. Let's make it a little wider so we can see what's happening right here. Here is the kick, here is the snare and now I'm just going to record the rest of the drum pattern. Okay, let's glue the items, let's open the pattern. Right now with Citala we have all the names of our samples here at the, at the left on the keyboard and let's quantize everything to the 16th notes. Perfect. 
Okay, now I want to make this kick a little louder. I want to make this 808 triangle a little quieter. Uh, so let's just use those faders right here. You can also do it in mixer, but uh, the basic mix I'm just doing like on the way uh, is always done here. By default, the changes you are making on this fader are really extreme. So if you want to make some gentle changes, just hold the control key on your keyboard and all the movements you are making will be really, really tiny, let's say. We don't really need all of those different sounds right now. So for the purpose of keeping everything clean, I will just delete it. So we have the kick, the snare, crash, and the cowbell. It just looks cleaner. Remember to keep your sessions clean. If you are naming everything accordingly and as short as possible, you will never find yourself in a situation like what is going on in this project. And now let's make a simple melody. For this purpose, I'm going to create another boss, which I will name Instrument Boss. And under Instrument Boss, I will just insert two more tracks, uh, track number one and track number two. On track number one, I'm going to insert Expand. This is a plugin by Air Music Technology. Here is how it looks like. And on the second track, I'm going to insert Hybrid. This is also a plugin by Air Music Technology. Those are the two basic plugins I recommend getting since Reaper doesn't really have any VST instruments besides one really, really simple synthesizer. So if you want to equip yourself with the variety of different sounds, uh, you can buy those plugins through my affiliate links in the description down below, and you will also be supporting the channel. Okay, let's start with the melody. Uh, maybe let's go to Ethnic and let's select Dulkimer. Maybe Harpoto. Let's use this one right here. Asian kind of sounding. I'm sorry for the generalization if you are Asian. I know every Asian culture has different roots and different instruments, but in general, it just sounds like... <laughs> you know what I mean. Maybe let's write the first melody so we don't need the track to be armed for writing. Let's just go to insert, new MIDI item, and it will insert a new MIDI item in your loop region. Let's open the MIDI item and here we just have the keyboard and we can write a melody. Now a few more words about the MIDI editor. Here, as you know, we are changing the grid uh, or in iLogic theme you can do it right here. Here you can change the type of the note, you can select triplets, dotted notes, swing, so you can make like old school boom bap kind of beats. And here we also have the key snap. It lets you select a certain scale. So for example, let's choose D uh, and here I have a huge list of scales. By default, this list of scales is not that huge. If you want more scales, I've included uh, the link for most, more scales in the description down below. You will have to load them at the very bottom of this list here. You just open uh, the file I've included, or you can watch a video about inserting more, sc more scales into Reaper, which I've made uh, some time ago. Okay, but let's just choose natural minor, a really, really simple and known scale. Okay, I think I'll write a simple eighth note melody. And now a little change. Now let's just copy the pattern and let's make some changes. And here we can see that we are clipping on our pseudo master bus. So let's just make the whole beat a little quieter. Cool. That way you won't have any issues with clipping at the end uh, and you won't have to uh, lower the volume of all the single bus. You just use this one pseudo master. Okay, so that's how our melody looks like. Uh, you've already heard it, so let's move to the second melody. This time I'm not inserting a new MIDI item. I'll arm the track for recording and I'll try to play something. Yeah, let's try to record that. Ah, I messed up, but we can just continue. One, two, three, four. And 
And now we are just selecting the second take and we are hitting glue items. Now double click on the item as we did before. Let's select the note resolution. Let's select all the notes. You can do it manually or you can just hit Ctrl plus A and let's hit Q and it's quantized. And it sounds pretty, pretty good, I gotta say. Maybe let's put it an octave lower. And now the last thing as far as making the beat is concerned is the 808. So for this purpose, let's make a new track. Let's name it uh, Bass Buzz. And under the Bass Buzz, I'm just placing my 808. The reason I'm making uh, a group for bass is that sometimes I'm using more basses than just the 808. For example, I use some plugged bass or some live bass I'm playing with my fingers. Uh, so in this case, there's just an 808. Okay, on the 808, let's just insert Resamplomatic. And let's insert an 808 here. Let's just drag and drop the sample, here it goes. And the thing I did not tell you uh, at the very beginning as I showed you uh, the resamplomatic for the first time, uh, by default it doesn't work with velocity, so if you want to have your sounds louder and quieter depending on how hard you hit the key, uh, you need to set the minimum volume to infinite. And that way you will have the velocity. Okay, so right now uh, we have the 808 sample loaded in, but... It sounds the same on every key. And to change this, we need to set the mode from sample, which ignores the MIDI note, to note, semitone shifted mode. And right now we will be able to play the notes. But as you are hearing, uh, they are playing at the same time and they are completely out of tune. So uh, we need to set the max voices to one because when the 808 is playing, we have one voice at the same time. We are not playing chords or anything. And now, It sounds much better, but it's still out of tune. So to tune the 808, just simply insert Expand or any other plugin that makes sounds. Uh, select a piano or the simplest sound you can just hear. Now the piano plays along with the 808. We need to go to Resamplomatic and here we have the pitch at start parameter and we will be changing it. And as we will be changing the value right here, uh, the pitch of the 808 will be changing too. You can get rid of the piano and you have a fully functioning 808. And the simplest way to make an 808 pattern is to open your drum pattern. Let's just copy the kicks. Let's insert the new MIDI item uh, on the 808 track and let's paste those notes from the kick to the 808. And here is the simplest 808 we could think of. But as you can see, um, the 808 is playing the same as long on every note. So if you want to obey uh, the length of the note, you need to check obey note offs. And right now, uh, the 808 will be playing only when the key is being uh, pressed. Same goes for those tiny notes. So as you can hear, they are super, super short. So now I can just set the length of uh, the certain note. Uh, and the endings of the 808, the release is really, really hard. So uh, what I want to change is the release right here. And let's just make it a little softer. Okay. You can always use the key snap if you are not sure if you are hitting the right note or you, or you can just write the 808 pattern on a higher octave. And if you want to make the 808 slide, uh, you need to change the portamento right here in the resamplomatic. So let's just make it longer, around 20 milliseconds in this case. And let's try to make a slide. So to make a slide, you just need to overlap two of the existing notes, but they can't uh, start at the same time. Let's make it higher so you can uh, hear it properly without the headphones. Works perfectly. Okay, now let's talk about the mixing tools and I will teach you how to make a bass and kick sidechain. Go to the bass bus we've just made with the 808 that is playing under it um, and insert recomp. 
it's a basic stock compressor you can find in Reaper. Firstly, let's set up the compressor for side chaining. So let's change the attack to one millisecond, let's say, the release to uh, like five milliseconds. So it will be a pretty quick uh, side chain. Let's change the ratio to like four to one, something like that. And the most important thing is the detector input, which should be set to auxiliary. So the compressor is not working on the 808, it will be working only when the uh, different signal, in this case the kick, uh, will be applied to the compressor. Okay, let's put this compressor right here. And now let's go to the kick, and here's the routing of the kick. Uh, just drag and drop the routing directly onto the compressor. As you can see, we have this, uh, this plug uh, under our cursor, so that's a good sign. Okay, so now it's drag and dropped. And as you can see, we are sending the audio from the track one slash two, so left and right from the kick to channel three and four on this track, and we don't want to send any MIDI, so we are sending none. Remember, MIDI turns to none. And now as I will be lowering the threshold on the compressor, you should be hearing the side chain happening on the 808. I will solo the kick and the 808. Yeah, it's working, but it's really, really hard kind of compression. So let's leave it around minus 6 dB. Cool. Yeah, and that's how you can make a sidechain uh, in Reaper. Those hi-hats are really, really bright. So here comes the second most important tool in Reaper, which is ReQ. Here is how it looks like. It's just a really, really simple EQ. Let's play the beat and let's just take care of those hi-hats. First of all, I'm going to cut out all the lower frequencies. Here we can boost some frequencies. And maybe let's cut out some of the higher end. Okay, that should do the job. And same for the snare. Let's just squeeze some more uh, snap from the snare. There's also a different kind of EQ you can download for Reaper. It's uh, community made and I made a video about it so you can watch it right here and it's named Reek, Req, I don't know, it sounds almost the same as Re-EQ. Uh, and it has uh, much more features. And it also lets you listen to a certain band. So it has much more advanced uh, and precise features for mixing and mastering, uh, so it's definitely worth checking. The next plugin I really like, especially for shaping my 808s, is the multi-wave shaper. So let's add the multi-wave shaper on the 808. And it's just basically a distortion. I've made a full overview of this plugin uh, also right here uh, at the top of this video. Uh, or if it's not displaying, all the links for the other videos will be in the description down below. And I'll just distort the 808. Okay. The next plugin I want to show you is a great plugin for kick and it's named 50 Hertz Kicker. Here's how it's named and it's a really simple plugin, just three uh, faders. Uh, and this plugin just basically generates a sine wave on this exact frequency as the kick hits. So if your kick is pretty dry and you want to make it super bassy, super like punchy, it's definitely a way to go. Let's have a listen. Without 50 Hertz Kicker. and with 50 Hertz kicker. You need to be wearing headphones. Let's make it a little louder and more of this low end impact. Oh yeah, great. Some other free plugins I can also recommend uh, are the uh, Tokyo Dawn Labs, uh, also known as the variety of sound plugins. And the first one is TDR 
Kotelnikov. It's the master bus compressor basically, and it can just squeeze uh, the hell out of your recording, out of your drum bus, uh, out of your vocal, anything you really like. I won't be showing you the exact features of the compressor and how it works. I'll just select uh, a preset, um, drum bus smasher, and I will change the threshold. Let's solo the drum bus so you can hear what's going on. And it will be super over compressed right now. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So let's lower the threshold. Okay, so it's just compressing the drum bus a little. And let's change the output. Another plugin you can use is TDR Nova. It's also a free four band EQ uh, you can use and it also has some dynamic features. So for example, uh, if the hi-hats are a little too loud, a little too jumpy, we can take control of it. Uh, let's just select this band right here and let's turn on the threshold feature. And it's being applied dynamically depending on uh, the threshold we set right here. I also really like the Slick EQ. It's a really simple free band EQ with a few modes, American, British, German, and Soviet. Uh, where they are just sounding a little different, but I'm just not digging deeply into it today. Uh, you can just take care of some uh, frequencies. For example, you want something brighter. Uh, let's make uh, the drums maybe a little warmer in the middle, 2.5 kilohertz. Let's see how it sounds like. Okay, we have some frequencies boosted. And the last plugin I want to tell you about is the Paranoia Mangler, and I will use it on the main melody uh, with Mate on Xpand. Uh, and it's just basically um, a digital distortion, a bit crusher, and can just distort your sound in a really, really cool way. Let's see. Without and with. It just adds this gentle buzz in the background. Of course, it has lots of parameters and lots of uh, possibilities, so you can watch my video about it right here. But let's leave it as it is. Now let's talk about the automation, which is a really, really important thing if you are making beats and you want to uh, put some diversity. For example, you want to make a filter opening at the beginning of your beat or anything like that. So as you press V on your keyboard, uh, you will see the volume automation. As you press P, you will see the pan automation, so you can put uh, your track on the right, on the left, and you can automate this. But if you want to see all the parameters, like for example in Ableton, uh, you just need to click on this really small icon right here and you will see all the parameters from all the plugins that are being inserted on this particular track. So we have uh, Xpand 2 and all its parameters as well as some basic parameters from this track like volume pan width, uh, volume pre-effects, trim volume and stuff. So let's add re-EQ on this track and let's say I want to automate the low pass filter so I can make some filter transitions. So as you can see, I've already put this band right here. So it's, it's gain it's, it's at zero. And as we'll be sweeping with this frequency, uh, we'll just cut out those frequencies. Let's have a listen. We want to achieve that kind of effect. So to make this happen, open parameters here. Here we see re-EQ and let's press FreeQ high shelf. Here we have it and let's close this, close this window. And here we see uh, our, our envelope. And writing the envelope is really simple. Just hold the control key and you can place the dots on the envelope or you can just draw anything you like on the envelope. But if you want to uh, make some precise automations uh, aligned to the grid, you need to hold the shift key and you will be placing the dots on the grid only. You can't place anything out of the grid. So you can make the automation, for example, close and open uh, the filter all the way uh, through, through, the, through your recording. And that's how it sounds like. If you don't want to draw that much of an automation and you just want to repeat a certain pattern, just select it like that. Uh, go here, press the right button of your mouse, go to automation items and insert new automation item. Here it goes. And now uh, you have an automation item. For example, like in FL Studio, you can copy it and you can just 
uh, copy and paste it all over your beat uh, or anywhere you like. Now I'll show you how to map your knobs, your faders, anything you have on your controller uh, to any parameter in the plugin. For example, uh, to this filter right here. First of all, you need your MIDI controller configured. So go to options, preferences, and in preferences under audio, you have MIDI devices. And in MIDI devices, you have all your MIDI devices. I have lots of MIDI devices, but let's focus on this one, which is MPD 218. And right now I have it enabled plus control. This means it can send MIDI notes when I'm playing something as well as control messages. So, so for example, when I move this knob, there's something happening uh, on my screen. So let's just click the right button of your mouse. You need to make sure you have your MIDI device enabled as well as you have enabled input for all the control messages. Okay, so here in the re-EQ, let's say I want to uh, assign this low pass filter to this knob right here. So the first thing we are doing is just do something with this filter, touch it, move it, then go to param, this small button right here, press MIDI learn, and now just move the fader, move the knob you'd like to uh, assign to this particular parameter. I want this one right here. As you can see, it's MIDI channel one, CC21, and just hit OK. And right now, as I'm moving this uh, knob right here, I'm just moving this filter in real time, which is really, really cool. Let's have a listen. I can just feel like a DJ or something. So, okay, it's working perfectly and I can record this movement, for example. So let's open the automation lane once more, uh, free Q high shelf in re-EQ and we need to click on this thing right here, this red area and let's change the automation mode from the default trim slash read, which does basically nothing. It just reads what's already done uh, to write, which will let you change the automation in real time. As you can see, we are already changing the envelope and now we can hit record without anything armed as you can see, no trucks are armed for recording. We don't worry about that. And we can just record the automation lane. And here we go. That's how you record uh, the automation in real time in Reaper. Now let's talk about sends, which are really important if you want to optimize your Reaper projects uh, for your PC. Sends allow you to use one instance, for example, of a reverb plugin, rather than using a few uh, reverbs, for example, on Cowbell, Crash, Snare, uh, on the hi-hat, on the melodies, and now you have like five reverbs loaded in only for drums, and your project just gets heavy and uh, the CPU just can't process everything properly. So let's make a new track. Let's name it Reverb Sense and let's add three tracks under uh, the Reverb Sense. Here we go. The first one will be Drum Reverb. The second one will be Plate Reverb. And the third one will be Hall Reverb. The free reverb uh, I'm recommending uh, is the Epic Verb. It's a really, really nice plugin. Uh, from the variety of sound and it has loads, loads, seriously loads of um, different presets for, for all the kinds of reverbs you can possibly think of. So this one will be the drum reverb, so I'm selecting the modern drums preset. Now I'm just drag and dropping the effects like that to another uh, track and I have the same plugins on the next track. Uh, here I'm selecting something from the medium reverbs let's say classic plate. On the whole reverb, I'm selecting something big, for example, church, let's say. Okay, and now it's done. Remember that all those reverbs are 100% wet, no dry signal, only the wet signal. So the reverb as a whole, nothing more. And right now, as I will be sending this main melody to the plate reverb, I'll be able to control the amount of the signal I want to send to this particular reverb. And maybe, maybe let's add the whole reverb. Now let's add some reverb for the snare, for example. So I'll use the drum reverb, which is a really short kind of reverb. So I'm not using any reverbs on the instrument bus, on any of the drums anything in the project. I'm just keeping all my reverbs under the reverb sense group and I'm sending um, the different portions of the signals from the project to this uh, particular reverbs. This allows me to have like 
four to five instances of uh, different reverbs in my project and that's really it. It also helps me to maintain a consistent sound of my project because if you are using 10 different reverbs in your project you are not only uh, making your CPU cry but also uh, everything is sounding differently and it may just sound a little messy if you don't know what you are doing. One extra thing that I would like to show you uh, in the MIDI editor as I press the right button on my mouse in the MIDI editor I have the insert scale, insert chord and insert arpeggio menu uh, so I can insert any chord I would like to insert. If you want those menus uh, here is a video where I explain how to install this particular script. I would like to do it here but it would just make this video like three hours long. So let's turn on the key snap we are in D natural minor and let's insert a chord, minor chord and maybe just a simple minor chord. And here we have a really, really simple chord pattern. It's not perfect, it doesn't really fit the beat in my opinion, but you get the idea uh, of this script. And the last thing in the MIDI editor I would like to show you is the view humanize. It's also uh, under the H letter on your keyboard. And this thing lets you misalign uh, the notes a little so they are not as perfect as they are uh, after quantizing. For example, you can change the velocity of your notes and the timing so they are as you can see, uh, much misaligned or just a little misaligned. It's just your choice. So we've made a really, really simple beat in the Reaper. Uh, and now let's get rid of the beat. Let's select everything. Let's hit delete. There is nothing in here and you can save it as a template. So let's just open file, a project template, save project as a template. And let's just name it making beats in a Reaper template. And here we go. Now, as you open a new project, you can always go to project templates and open your template. So you can start making the beat right away without configuring all of this mess that we've just configured uh, once again. So we have already configured our MIDI inputs, our instruments, uh, our samplers, everything. Of course you will change the instruments and stuff, but it will save you a lot of your precious time. So that was a simple guide for uh, making beats in Reaper. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up, subscribe the channel with all the notifications so you won't miss any new upcoming videos about Reaper. If you want a personal one-on-one -on -one lesson with me, you can check out the offer on my website, the links in the description down below. If you have any questions, concerns, if there's something you didn't really understand uh, in this tutorial or you think I could cover a topic I didn't cover, uh, please let me know in the comment section down below. You can check out the Beat Grinding in Reaper uh, playlist on my channel or just watch any of my videos because I'm always smuggling some tips and tricks for Reaper uh, in any uh, of my videos. My name is Dominic, you've been watching Vozo Beats and keep the good vibes alive!